Christians, aren't you glad that you don't know the spiritual warfare that takes place in the heavenlies? That we're completely unaware of most of the time? Because you know the conflict is absolutely real. The Apostle Paul says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. You see, the enemy, the devil, is he's not a man dressed up in a red fancy dress outfit with a tail. But you know, he's a real enemy. He goes about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he, he may devour. He hates our precious Lord Jesus. He cannot harm him because the Lord Jesus has already accomplished the victory. He's finished the work. He's won the victory at the cross of Calvary. And so what the enemy does then is to seek to stop people hearing about the name and the glory of Christ. He cannot attack the Lord Jesus. And so what he does is to attack those who belong to the Lord Jesus, who love the name of Jesus, and who want to proclaim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is why he continues his unceasing attacks upon the church of Christ, trying one form of attack and then trying another. You, you see that so clearly in the early chapters of Acts of the Apostles. You know, the enemy may not be mentioned by name, but behind the scenes, you see in, in the early chapters of Acts how he is, the enemy is constantly seeking to destroy the early church. First of all, he tries in chapters, Acts chapters 2, 3, and 4, he tries to destroy the church by persecution. But in actual fact, when they're persecuted, they're not destroyed, but instead they flourish. Uh, in fact, when they're scattered because of persecution, they're scattered and they go everywhere gossiping the gospel. So that the gospel begins to spread. God's word spreads in the face of persecution. So because that doesn't work, then the devil tries a different attack. Outward persecution doesn't work, so he tries inward corruption. So then you next come to uh, Acts chapter 5, and you have the, the whole episode of the corruption of Ananias and Sapphira, who basically lie. They're accused of, being, of lying. Peter says, you've lied to the Holy Spirit. It's a case of moral failure. But once again, the apostles seek the mind of God, and they deal with it in the appropriate way, and once again we, we are told those words that the word of God began to grow again. It went forward and the church begins to grow again. Once again, the enemy having failed through persecution, having failed through inward corruption in the church, then tries a third, another, a third and final strategy, namely distraction. So you come then to Acts chapter 6. The apostles are unable to get on with their God-given ministry of the word of prayer. In fact, in that order, the ministry of word, prayer and the ministry of the word, they're unable to get on with the, the task that they have in hand. But instead, they have to minister to this, uh, to this group of women who uh, we're told about these widows. There's a dispute in caring for the practical needs of the widows. Some are seemingly being overlooked. The unity of the church is at stake, but God then graciously once again leads them and they appoint deacons to care for the practical needs of the congregation so that the apostles can give themselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And once again, we're told that, that almost like a formula, that the church begins to grow, that the word of God begins to spread. And so in the early cha chapters of uh, Acts, you can see how the enemy clearly tries to attack the church by persecution, then corruption, then finally by distraction. And in each case, when the apostles put the Lord first and they seek his mind and his wisdom, in each form of attack, the church grows in numbers and in grace and maturity. They may not have realized at the time, but they were wrestling with not with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. They were engaged in spiritual warfare. 